first example let us see how to calculate the time complexity for the given code now if you see example 1 there is only one statement suppose in your code like this statement and semicolon like in c program you give semicolon after a statement consider there is only one statement in your code then what would be the time complexity for this single statement above we have only a single statement in the code that's why the time complexity will be constant how many steps are there only one one is nothing but a constant right one is constant that's why it is a constant amount of time taken by this program for its execution now let, let us see some another example Let's take an example of a for loop for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus right and inside that there is a statement which runs till this for loop is true condition is true and it exists only when the condition becomes false so if we focus on this line for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus so it means that if the condition is true for all these values definitely the statement which is available inside this block would be executed for that many number of times so when i is 0 it will be executed when i is 1 it will also allow you to execute like that till it will go till n minus 1 so number of step that number of times this statement will be uh, executed is n right so it is starting with 0 ends with n minus 1 if you calculate total number of steps times it, it becomes n that's why the time complexity for the above algorithm will be linear the running time of the loop is directly proportional to n so how many times is this particular code would be executed it is n times let us see one more example now how to calculate the time complexity for the nested loops any nested loop let us see there is there are there are two loops that is outer loop and inner for loop outer for loop is having the code i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus whereas inner for loop have the code that is I, j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus and th there is some statement inside the block of a inner for loop so it means that we just have to focus on this particular code statement how many times this statement will be executed by this nested for loop so for each value of i that we said in uh, last lecture how the nested for loop works for each value of i inner for loop that is j loop will be completely executed right so outer for loop which goes from 0 to n whereas also uh, inner for loop will go from 0 to n minus 1 sorry it is n minus 1 0 to n minus 1 right so ultimately number of times will be for outer for loop it is n whereas inner for loop is also n that's why the time complexity for the above algorithm will be quadratic it is n square n into n outer for loop is n and inner for loop is n so how many times this statement will be executed n square time that's why the time complexity for this code is n square that is quadratic square means quadratic the running time of two loops is proportional to the square of n when n doubles the running time increases by n into n so your focus should be here always the statements so how many times that statement will is executing if it is executing only constant time then the time complexity is constant whereas if it is linear then your time complexity is n if it is quadratic your time complexity is n square for the algorithm right is it clear student till now any questions good so it means you understood till till this point and now we'll we'll go to the next uh, example how to, how to calculate the time complexity for an algorithm like this it's an algorithm for binary search fourth example is an example of a 
binary search algorithm that we are having in, in data structure. You might have studied this also in C programming language in previous semester. We know that how binary search works. Uh, to find any element using binary search algorithm, we have to apply a while loop in such a way that every time it will it will first calculate the midpoint of the array. And how it finds the midpoint of the array? By the formula low plus high by two. And if the target element is less than the mid element of the array, then we decrement, uh, decrement the high point by the formula high equal to mid minus one. Else, if the target value is greater than the midpoint of your array element, then we increment the low pointer or low value by mid plus one. Else, we exit from this while loop. This, this, this will be executed number of times till low is less than or equal to high. So if the animation is available, I will show you the animation of this uh, particular uh, algorithm that is binary search. Over here it is. Now consider that there, there are elements in inside the array. There are ten elements given in this array. All the elements that you provide to the uh, binary search algorithm are always sorted. All the elements are always sorted. So if you see at a, a of 0 index, we have 1, a of 1 index, we have 2, and so on till a of 9, we have say 90. These are random elements inserted into this array. The list of elements have been given to this binary search. And one more element would be provided to this algorithm. That is, I want to search a particular element, so that is called target. So that target element will be provided by the user and let us see by this particular video how it search that element. So here, suppose you want to search the data 57 into this array, then how to search it? So we take two pointers, that is mean and max. So mean is the pointer which points to the first index of the array. And whereas max is the pointer which points to the last index of the array initially. And in the next step, we'll find the mid element of this array by the formula low uh, mid, uh, mid equal to mean plus high by two. So this is the formula for finding the mid element of this array. That is mid equal to mean plus max divided by two. Now if you put the values here of mean is zero, whereas max is nine. And if you apply this formula, you will get the mid point as four. And now we'll check if A of mid is our target element that we, we want to search. A of mid is 11 whereas uh, the element we are searching is 57 correct so where it appears if you see this array where it appears it is appearing on the right hand side of the mid element so what this algorithm does is it ignores all the elements which are appearing on the left hand side of the mid element and only focus on the right sub array and it shift mean value from index 0 to index 5 that is mid plus 1 position so we need to search our target element into a right server now
Now for the next iteration, if you see now here, mean is now assigned a of five, whereas max is at a of nine. For the next iteration, your mean value is five, whereas max value is nine. Again, it applies the formula to find the next mid value. That is mid equal to low plus high by two or min plus max by two. And the next mid that we found is now seven because mean was five and nine was uh, max was nine. So five plus nine is fourteen by two it is. Seven. Again, we check the same thing. Is a of mid is our target element, and now if you see a of mid is twenty five, and the target that we want to search is fifty seven. We want to search in the, into this array. They are not matching. They are not matching. That's why we have to look for the element that is we want to search. Is it appearing on the left hand side or right hand side? It is appearing on the right hand side of the array uh, mid element. So we have to focus only right sub array of this. Particular mid element. So again, we need to shift the minimum pointer from a of five to a of eight. That is mid plus one position. Any element using binary search algorithm, we have to apply a while loop in such a way that every time it will it will first calculate the mid point of the array. And how it finds the midpoint of the array by the formula low plus high by two, and if the target element is le less than the mid element of the array, then we decrement uh, decrement the high point by the formula high equal to mid minus one. Else, if the target value is greater than the midpoint of your array element, then we increment the low pointer or low value by mid plus one. Else we exit from this while loop. This 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 will be executed number of times till. That's why the running time of the algorithm is proportional to the number of times that is n can be divided by two. This is because the algorithm divides the working area of in the halves with each iteration. So as the number of iteration increases, the array is also divided every time. That's why this particular code requires logarithmic time for its execution. So the time complexity for such algorithm is logarithmic. Let us see one more example. How to calculate the time complexity for this particular example number five? So it's an example of quick sort. We have quick sort in our syllabus. We'll see in detail what is quick sort is. Here, what is happening, student? Again, there is a method of divide and conquer comes into the picture. We have one element that is called pivot element. We can consider any element of the array as a pivot element, and then we try to place that particular element at its proper place using this quick sort. Once that element pivot element is placed to the proper place, the entire array gets divided into two halves. One is called as left sub array for quick sort, which goes from uh, left point to pivot minus one. Whereas another area is another sub array is nothing but that pivot element plus one position to the right sub array. The way we have seen in the binary search, the same thing happening happens here also. So your entire array gets divided into Two sub arrays. Now the quick sort works separately on the left sub array, whereas separately on the right sub array simultaneously. So it means that we are in this particular code. We are dividing the array as well as the operations are happening on the two sub arrays simultaneously. That's why the time complexity for such code would be n into log n. Why log n? Because we divide the arrays into two halves in every iteration. That's why log n. But how many times we are doing this? N times. That's why the time complexity for such type of code is n into log n. 
for this thing your focus should be on the statement how many times this statement is going to execute that would be decided by for each value of i j loop should be executed completely similarly for j each value of j the inner loop should be executed completely so if i consider this is going to be executed n times this is also going to be executed n time similarly the third for loop is also going to be executed n times so what would be the number of times uh, for the, this particular segment so it would be executed n into n into n times that is nothing but n cube so the time from the city is cubic yeah n cube if there are only two loops nested loops it is n square if there is only one loop it is n that is linear have you understood students so the time complexity t of n equal to n cube here yeah. for algorithm time complexities so consider that there is the constant amount of time taken by your algorithm for its execution then what will be the big o notation what is the big o notation means maximum amount of time taken by your algorithm for its execution it is o of n for log logarithmic function the time complexity would be o of log n if your function is linear then the time complexity would, would be o of n if the function is n log n then the time complexity is o of n log n if your function is quadratic then the time complexity is o of n square if your function is cubic then the time complexity would be o of n square if your function is polynomial function then the time complexity would be n of n raised to o of 1 if it is exponential function then it is 2 raised to o of n so these are some certain uh, big o notation examples given for uh, different types of functions so you can remember this uh, maybe ask table where we are going to see what are the time complexity, best case, always case, and worst case time complexity for all the different sorting algorithms? Because this is just the introductory part uh, in the introduction chapter. But in another sex module, we have separate chapter on sorting. In sorting, we are going to see what is best case, always case, and worst case time complexity for each and every type of sorting technique that we have in, a, in the syllabus. So we have collection sort, bubble sort, insertion sort if sort, quick sort, merge sort, bucket sort, and daddy sort. And if you see, these are these are these are the time complexities: omega of n square, theta of n square, o of n square for selection sort. For bubble sort, base case is o of uh, omega of n. Average case is theta n square, and worst case is o of n square. Insertion sort again, it is same like a bubble sort only. 